Okay, so here we are with the Better Fedora Remix known as Fusion Linux 14. Now, this only came out a few days ago from when I make this video, so it is a fairly recent release considering Fedora 14 came out a little while ago last year. It's a bit late to the bandwagon, but I think it's for good reason. So, let's get into the review, shall we? So, of course, as in case it's not obvious by now, it is based on Fedora 14. Now, Fedora 14 in itself was not a very exciting release, which is why I'm glad to see uh, other members of the community doing remixes or respins of Fedora. So, we have the same default Fedora 14 background, and uh, that's about where the similarities stop. They have completely changed the theme, they've changed the icons, they've changed the programs, they've changed the values of the operating system, and quite honestly, they've changed the usability quite a bit as well. So first of all, look and feel. I know you guys sometimes get bored of hearing this, but it's a fairly stock standard theme, but it's not as stock standard as what comes with Fedora 14. So yeah, the theme is uh, we're using Compiz Fusion window borders here, as you can probably recognize. It looks sim similar to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the Sabion um, GNOME edition that we looked at. Um, and as far as the backgrounds are concerned, they've got a pretty nice assortment of backgrounds here. I think most of them are from Fedora 14. And you can see there's a lot of nature ones as well as some fantasy ones. But I think uh, they've also added some ones uh, specific to Fusion, uh, Fusion Linux 14. Now, I will have one small complaint about look and feel, and that is the fonts. The fonts look a tiny bit dodgy. I am not sure, but I think it's because they have uh, not installed the, the Lib3 Type 6 um, package, which gives you those smoother fonts. Uh, some distros like to leave that out due to um, licensing uh, issues, but most main distros like Ubuntu and Linux Mint uh, generally include them. But you can see here the subpixel smoothing is not as good as some that I've seen. So that is a bit of a knock against it, but quite honestly I don't think you're going to notice it, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, now, Fusion Linux gets most of its inspiration from Linux Mint, so in some senses it is kind of like the Linux Mint of Fedora. So of course we have the Mint menu. Now over here we have of course the uh, we have the Places menu, we've got the System menu and the Favorites, just like you've all seen in Linux Mint, so it's not that hard to adjust to. Um, I would definitely recommend if you're looking to sort of dip your toe in the water of an RPM based distro but you're not quite comfortable with going for something as serious as OpenSUSE or Fedora, I suggest you give Fusion Linux a go and you'll see why hopefully by the time I've finished doing this video. Uh, okay, so pre-installed applications we're just going to go quickly through because again pre-installed applications is not everything but in this distro it actually makes up a good percentage of it. Alright, so first accessories. We've got all the standard stuff here. Uh, Firelight is different. You have a disk usage analyzer here where it can tell you exactly how much disk space you've used. Uh, you've also got uh, G-Edit, Gnome Do, Crusader, uh, which is a twin panel file manager. Gnome Do, we all know what that is. Language Translator, Redshift Color Temperature Adjustment Tool, which is pretty handy actually. That's a Fedora specific tool, I believe. We've got Shutter, which is the screen capture, and we've got Tracker Search tool and the handwritten notes tool, uh, which is Zernal. Don't ask me how you pronounce that. The rest is stock standard GNOME, but it's good to see some useful utilities in there. Under Education, we have the Stellarium Night Sky Viewer, and this is a wonderful application, and uh, quite honestly, I used to use this a lot when I first started out. Um, you can configure where you live, etc., etc., to, uh, to, so you can observe the night sky, so it's very handy. We also have the desktop globe, which is marble, which we've all seen that before, so I'm not going to bother. Under games, we have a lot of games here. And that's one thing I'm going to say about Fusion Linux. It seems to be able to pack an awful lot of applications in for only a 1.67 gig download. So I was pretty impressed with that, actually. So we've got Abe's Amazing Adventure, we've got Alien Blaster, Blob Wars, Chromium BSU, Critical Mass, Foo Billard, Free Civ, Free Civ Server, Frozen Bubble, Galaxium, Kobo Deluxe, Maelstrom, Numpty Physics, Play on Linux, which of course is the uh, the wine wrapper, uh, T Worlds, and Mi and Wine Mine. That is a lot of games. 
under graphics we've got a lot as well we've got blender f-spot photo wall and photo wall if you're not familiar with it is a uh, it's like a poster creation you can uh, add different text box uh, you can capture images from your webcam you can do um, text on a on a curved line it's actually a pretty awesome application I believe it's a KDE application so you'll kind of notice a few of the KDE icons up the top here but yes interesting inclusion this is not an application I've seen before and quite honestly there have been a few applications that I've noticed in this distro that I haven't noticed elsewhere so it's good to see something different every once in a while back under graphics we have of course the GIMP, we have Inkscape, we've got MyPaint, PhotoPrint, Scribus, Simple Scan, and Vue Noir. Vue Noir, of course, being the image viewer, and Inkscape, of course, being the vector graphics. We also have MyPaint, which is a uh, another very good uh, painting application. It's pretty much an, an organic uh, painting simulator, much like uh, Corel's offerings. Um, yeah, that you've got all sorts of brushes here that you can use. Uh, and I know a particular artist who does most of her work uh, through my paint, so it's actually been quite a draw card for her. You can see they've got all sorts of different types of brushes that you can use. You can change the different color. And uh, yeah, it's quite, a, it's quite an impressive application. Now for Inkscape, they actually have quite a few good Inkscape examples here installed on the live system. So you can see here that you've got some works that people have uh, done with Inkscape that are actually pretty impressive. You can see here they've got some, uh, some bust shots, they've also got cars and uh, faces that have all been made with Inkscape, so it's, it's a pretty impressive testament to what Inkscape is capable of, so it's nice to see that. Uh, we're going to come back to this in a minute, but I'm just going to keep going with the applications. Um, so under Internet, we have Amul, which of course is the, uh, the client for Emul. We've got Chromium Web Browser, Dropbox, Empathy, Firefox for uh, the GGZ Core Client, Giver, Gwibber, Net Activity Viewer, Pan News Reader, Remote Desktop Viewer, Team Viewer 6, Thunderbird, Transmission, and XChat. Now, quite honestly, this is almost appears to be Linux Mint with all the best applications on top of. So you, we, you, we've got Dropbox pre-installed here. We've also got Gwibber uh, and Empathy. We've got the Pan News Reader. A lot of good stuff here. We've got Firefox 4 and Chromium, so that's great to see. Uh, Office, nothing exciting, just open Office. Sound and video, we've got the Acetone ISO, Arista Transcoder, which is good to see. Audacious, uh, interesting choice of music player there, but that's only a lightweight one. Audacity for your audio editing, Audio CD Extractor, Avid Emacs Video Editor, Banshee Cheese, No Mem Player, GTK Record My Desktop, Handbrake, K3B, Morrow Internet TV, Movie Player, Music Brains, Picard, Pitivy Video Editor, and VLC. My goodness, they have chopped so many applications into this distro. Quite honestly, unless you are somebody with very specific needs, you just have to download this distro and you are good to go. I don't think you would even need to connect to the internet to download any extra packages. This distro is chocked to the brim. Considering Ping iOS is only about 200 megs less, I would have expected to see a lot more in Ping iOS, but this is chocked full of the best of the breed applications. It's really good to see. System tools. Okay, we've got Illyrius, which of course is the GNOME tweaker. Now it says that, do you, are you sure you want to download the Windows Codex and the Lib DVD-C S2, uh, which violates Digital Millennium Copyright Acts and other things in the United States of America? And it says, do you agree? And I'm going to agree, of course, because I'm not in the US. And basically, this is Ubuntu tweak for GNOME. So it's absolutely crazy customization abilities here. You can customize desktop font, fonts, GNOME sessions, repositories, installing software, recover RPMs, computer doctor, study Linux, etc., etc., etc. It's crazy. Any level of configuration you want to do here with GNOME or with the user space in general, here you can pretty much do with uh, Lyrius or however it is you want to say it. So we've also got our configuration editor, disk usage analyzer, disk utility, Dolphin, which is interesting because it's KDE. Uh, we've also got the Fedora Live USB creator, Fedora Plus, which of course is the script for installing extra applications. You've got the file system, uh, file system cleaner, you've got Gparted, HTOP, uh, installed to the hard drive, which of course is only because I'm running it as a live system, and you've got the terminals, etc. Wine is pre-installed, and as we saw before, Play on Linux is also there. You can also do different uh, configurations such as restarting your Wine 
uh, install. So if something goes a little wrong while you're running a Wine application, you can simulate a system restart for Windows, which is pretty cool. Uh, under administration, we've got add remove software, which is what we all know and love. Well, okay, I wouldn't exactly say love, but okay, it's there. Software sources, you can configure the software sources. Software update, you can do the same. And quite honestly, these are the same tools that Ubuntu uses. So it's good to see that uh, they're, they're sticking with stuff that works and not making it too complicated. Uh, again, I think it would be worth uh, porting a different software management tool here because quite honestly, this ad remove software is getting old. But you know, it works and so that's all that matters in all honesty. Now. More on the look and feel, of course we have the dock bar X running down the bottom here. So uh, users of Windows 7 will be very familiar with this. Um, if you pump up the if you pump up the size of the task bar, it'll make more sense as to uh, how it is supposed to look. And you can kind of see now that's looking a bit more like Windows 7. Uh, you've of course got the indicator applets down the bottom here and you've got your date, time, and wallpapers, uh, workspace switching, etc. Now I'm going to pop back into examples here because I want to just show you some other cool stuff that they've done here. Now they've actually gone to quite a number of lengths here to give new users an idea of what uh, free software is capable of. So they've got a few links to some good websites here such as core values of free software, the origins of Linux, they also have many tutorials here like uh, Blender and Compiz Cube, Compiz Fusion, Firelight, which is visualizing your disk usage. They've got an Inkscape tutorial, go open source or go home, so obviously an open source advocate um, tutorial there. Play on Linux, how to get StarCraft, Starcraft 2 on Linux running, so that is great. And of course the power of the Linux find command. So they've actually done a good bit of research here and put some helpful tutorials in here for new users which is good to see. Uh, they've also got the Truth Happens video, which uh, you've probably, most of you have already seen. It's just that one that Red Hat made way back in the day about uh, how we receive persecution for running Linux and one thing and the next, and quite honestly, yeah, apparently you win at the end. And then of course we get to see the uh, big Red Hat at the end. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna talk too much about that. It's pretty old, but nevertheless, it's a cool video. Uh, you've got the release notes here as well, so it's much like the Ubuntu examples folder that they usually give you. So hardware compatibility wise, I haven't noticed any issues as of yet. Uh, suspend and resume works fine. Um, desktop recording seems to be working fine. The, uh, the uh, audio was picked up well. Graphics card's working fine. Um, the Compiz is working very smoothly indeed. As you can see here, we're just uh, mucking around with some of the effects. Yep, quite honestly, I don't have anything to complain about it. In my opinion, it's definitely the Linux Mint of the Fedora world, but having said that, they go over and above what Linux Mint provide, and they really chalk in some fantastic applications uh, that all you could ever want or need uh, in a Linux distribution. So they've got, uh, Fedora has extensive repositories. Quite honestly, it is definitely Fedora done right. Fedora has gained a bit of a reputation, at least in my opinion, to be a bit of a boring release that I haven't really reviewed or looked into much. But I'd be happy to run, uh, I'd be happy to run Fusion Linux 14 as a main operating system. Uh, at this point, as far as I can tell, they only have a 32-bit. I will look into that more, but I'm pretty sure they only have a 32-bit at this point. Whether they release a 64-bit is uh, yet to be seen. But uh, yeah, quite honestly, I'm happy with this release. Um, it's good to see that they're doing some nice work here. Uh, they've integrated the uh, Fianza Cupertino icons quite nicely, and uh, they make a nice addition to uh, what is pretty well a very polished desktop, brilliant for a new user coming over to RPM. Uh, if you prefer Ubuntu and you like their uh, package management and you like their software installation, then you're probably best to stick in that camp. But if you'd like to start uh, making a transition to something like um, RPM, or you just don't like the way Ubuntu is going with some of their uh, politics, then uh, then I reckon this is a good distribution to give it a whirl, just to something different, something that uh, that can compete quite nicely with anything that Mint or Ubuntu can offer. You've got all of your favorite applications here, K3B, Banshee, OpenOffice. You've got best of the breed stuff here in a very nice speedy package. It's all you could want under the one roof, and really that's what Fusion Linux is. The name is self-explanatory, and I believe it does just that.